So this is my Papio Petalum Mel Hell. You can look at her right there. She, I've had her since February, uh, middle of February. She was in bud when I bought her of all the ones that she had, uh, the nursery had. She was the only one that was still in bud. The rest of them had already opened up. Took her about a week to open up. So she's actually been in bloom going on two months now. So I was just going to chat about the Papio Pedalum and the Karenese and kind of the differences between the Papio Pedalum and our typical Phalaenopsis that we get at the grocery store. Um, but if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know I'm a little bit clumsy. And well, look what we have here. Yeah, I dropped her. Fortunately though, I did drop her um, here on the table as I was setting things up. So I figured, you know, I'll go ahead and repot her just because um, there is some green in here and I just, I figure she's already missing half the media so let's just go ahead and repot her. And plus, this isn't a clear pot and I like the clear pots because I like to see what's going on inside. I'm, I, I like to keep an eye on that. So let's just go ahead and get started. I am not cutting the bloom yet just because, I mean, it is going over, but I'm really enjoying it and she is just beautiful. I do not want to um, take that off quite yet, but when I do, I will cut the stem. Let me move this out of the way real quick so just so I can show you. But when I do, I'm gonna cut the stem as close to the leaf there as possible without damaging the leaf. But for now, I'm just going to leaf the bloom on there. I am going to take the stake out for a moment until we're ready to put her back in. But uh, patio petalums, unlike phalaenopsis, are not epiphytic. And what that means is you're not going to see aerial roots growing on a patio petalum. And if you do, they won't get very long. They'll stay in the air for a little bit and then they'll dry out. And I've got a patio petalum here, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. See these aerial roots right here? And they are not gonna do this. The patio petalum is not gonna give you these pretty aerial roots. Um, and it's only because um, Phalaenopsis are epiphytic, meaning that they can grow in the air. Um, most of them in their natural habitat do grow um, up against tree bark and whatnot. Whereas your patio petalum is either going to be a um, lytophyte or terrestrial. Most of the time, and by terrestrial that doesn't mean that they grow in dirt and soil like what we think of as far as potting soil. Uh, generally what they uh, grow in is the debris, the leaf debris and that kind of stuff. So it's still flowy and um, there's air, it's just not as much. So I am going to squeeze the side of the pot just to make sure that any roots that might be attached come loose. And I'm going to check the bottom real quick. And this is how I spilt it, guys. I was looking at the bottom to see if um, it looked dry or if there were any roots coming out. And, of course, you know, dropped it and did my thing. So, um, But I'm going to pour in here today. And just I'm grabbing it as far down in the base as I can. Actually, I'm touching the media. I'm trying not to. And she does feel like she might be stuck in there. So let me squeeze a little bit more just to make sure that all the roots, because the thing with Pathio Pedalum roots is they're very, very sensitive. So you want to be extra careful with them, um, unlike the Phalaenopsis roots. I mean, you still have to be careful with Phalaenopsis roots, but they tend to recover a lot quicker. So if you notice, these roots are brown. And once I get some of this bark off of here, I'll show you too, they're kind of fuzzy as well. Um, that is absolutely normal. That's what they're supposed to look like. Because they are not epiphytic, they're not going to produce chlorophyll, so they're not going to be green. So let's just get some of this bark off here. It's coming off pretty easy, but you do want to be extra, extra careful with your uh, patio petalum roots just because they don't grow quite like the Phalaenopsis roots grow. Um, and if you damage them too much, I should probably be wearing, wearing gloves just because of the oils on my hand, but I'm just doing it this way. Any other time you guys know me, I'm wearing gloves, so the one time I should wear gloves just for the protection, I'm not. Oh, what an oxymoron I am. All right, so 
So let's get some of this in here out. And then I'm just gonna kinda tap to get the bark out from in between. I don't wanna dig too much. Like I said, they're very sensitive. So these down here, you can see it is, it's gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow it on up. And, oh, it just came right off. So it was already detached, so. Now, I watered this about three days ago and the media is still damp. It's not wet, it's um, borderline going to dry. So unlike the Phalaenopsis, where you um, can kind of let them dry out in between waterings, your Pathio Petalums, you definitely do not want them to dry out in between. You wanna keep them moist, damp. However, that doesn't mean you want to leave them wet. And the rule of thumb with any of these is it's better to be let them stay dry for a few minutes longer or a, few, a day longer than to douse them with water and then rot the roots. And that's really with any plant, orchid or house plant. And then uh, these look a lot like if you look at the leaves on these, they look a lot like a, a Phalaenopsis leaves. However, Phalaenopsis are monopodial, meaning that all their growth is going to come from one area. These are sympodial, similar to your uh, Oncidiums, Cattleyas, uh, Lagodendrobiums, where they produce their next growth from off the side, and they're connected by a, a rhizome. The rhizomes on Pathiopedalums are really, really small. You can't even see them, um, but they produce these fans. So if you look, here's a fan. Here's a fan, here's a fan. Um, and these are all separate growths. They're not babies, they're not cakeys. If this happens on a Phalaenopsis and you get a, a side growth from the base, that would be a cakey or a baby plant. These are actually all new separate growths. And as the more mature fans um, get older and the new fans come in, the older ones will die off and the plant will reabsorb the energy to support the new growth. Right now, I don't have any fans uh, on here. This one right here, this leaf right here, looks like it's getting a little bit light, might start dropping. So this is what I'm thinking is probably the oldest fan on this plant, which is the one that is currently in bloom. So obviously that is not the oldest, that would be the newest, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. Um, it's, been doing, it's been like this since I got it, so I'm thinking it might just be in a deficiency of some sort or some mechanical damage or maybe it just got too much light at some point. Um, but she's doing fine. And as you can see, she's got some really great roots here. So I am going to go through and I'm going to clip off the ones that are not doing well. I'm not going to take too many off because I don't want to mess her up. I've had Pathiopedalum in the past and following the old scrolls and the, the old scribes said to keep it wet. So that's what I did. I kept it wet. Well, guess what happened when you keep it wet? The roots rot and it dies. So on this one, I have been watering her just as she's drying out. And what I'm going to repot her in is small fur bark, charcoal, and perlite. And that is because they do like to stay a little more compact um, and snug than a Phalaenopsis or a Cattleya. So, oh, there's another root that's just coming right on off. All right, so let me get her cleaned up and then we will come back and see what we have left. All right, so the way, I just thought I'd do the last few on camera. So the way that you check for these is the way you check any other orchid is you just want to feel and if they're squishy, then they're not viable, so you can cut them off. With these, um, you do, again, want to be uber careful when you're squeezing on them. They're not like Phalaenopsis where if it's soft, you can just slide off that vellum. They, um, it will just break off <clears throat> if it's dead. But if you can kind of see, let me see if I get a little bit closer here. See how fuzzy, see the fuzz on there? That is just too cool. Little fuzzy, little fuzzy wuzzies. Um, but she actually had pretty good little roots. The ones that I actually pulled off on camera were actually most of what she had that needed to go. There are a couple on here that are questionable, but since I don't know a lot about them, I am not going to cut them off. 
I'm just going to leave them on there. It's just one or two, but she does have this one here um, that's just kind of weird looking that I am going to cut that one off. Um, and it's the one that has uh, the green mold and stuff on it, and I just couldn't get it to wash off, so just cut it right up there to the base. And then there's another one that showed itself right after I cut that one. So we'll cut that one off as well and get that out of the way. And then I am going to spray just a little bit with the hydrogen peroxide, 3%. There we go. And unlike the Phalaenopsis um, orchids or any of your other orchids on these, while well, it sizzles here, um, Passiopedalum roots are not um, forgiving if you keep pressing down on them and moving them around a lot. They will snap on you um, and then you're just out one. Unlike the Phalaenopsis that when they get wet they can get kind of pliable. This is not pliable. This has, I mean, they have no give. Look, like I'm, I'm squeezing and it has absolutely no give to it whatsoever. I am kind of untangling just a little bit so that I have not, not a big clump in the middle so that when I go to pot, I'm able to get a lot of the media in between here. Because like I said, they do not like a lot of air around their roots like the Phalaenopsis and Cattleyas don't mind. If you end up with air, you know, air gaps, sometimes even big air gaps, these guys do not like air gaps at all. Um, they do like air around their media, and that is why you want to use an airy medium, but you do not want to leave a bunch of air in between the roots, if that makes sense. All right, so now we're going to pick a pot size, and she actually has some really, really nice roots. Actually, of the Pathiopedalums that I've had, she's got the best root system, so I feel like this one is going to actually set me up for the best success so they don't um, kill her. Now they do have, this is what they call a multi-floral, um, the, the, gr the light green ones um, that don't have the mottled leaves on them. These are multi-floral. These tend to get a little bit bigger than your Maudier ones, which are the ones that have the beautiful patterning. Those are the ones that I purchased originally and doing some research. These are actually easier if you're going to start off with them. They're more forgiving. Whereas the Maudier ones, um, from my experience, um, if you've grown Maudier ones successfully, please leave me a comment down below so that I can grow them too because I think they're gorgeous. And one of the reasons, I don't know if I mentioned this, they call it the slipper orchid. If you look at the lip on this, it looks like a little lady slipper, almost like a little Cinderella slipper. Um, that's why they call them the lady slipper. So I am going to choose a pot. So unlike, like I said, unlike the Phalaenopsis, um, these roots are not forgiving. So you do want to get a pot that these roots will fit in where you don't have to cram a lot because you don't want to damage them. They, they don't bend. They're, they're not forgivers. So I've got a couple of options here. I've got the slotted pot from Repot Me. And then this one here, um, I don't know what brand it is, but I got it off of Amazon as well. Originally, I was going to put it in here, you know, because it came out of that little six inch nursery pot. I feel like now that we've got it out of the pot with the roots, I think this one's gonna be a little too small. So I'm not even going to consider that one. So let's just uh, see here. And I think she is going to be good in this one. Um, another thing with your Pathiopedalums, guys, is the base of your plant. You want it set just, in, just under the media, not up. So when those new roots start growing, they grow directly into the media. Because if you have her sitting up like this, like you would a fowl, then those aerial roots are going to dry right away and it's never going to go down into the media. So you do want to kind of put it down into um, deep enough so that the media is right above the base. And this one has got enough room where she can grow, still kind of take over the pot with the roots, but it's not so small that I can't put, the, put her down into the media like I want. Because as, as I've told you guys before, I like to start low and then I'll, I'll bring her up after I'm done uh, putting in the media. So let me just set her to the side real quick and move some of this stuff out of the way, and then we'll be back. All right, so I've got everything we need. I'm just gonna grab my pot and make it. 
here, lay her down, and I did grab a glove just because of the charcoal in there. Um, tends to irritate my hand a little bit, so let me just mix all this up, and like I said, it's just charcoal, uh, fine fur bark, and some perlite, and I'm using all that because one, it's small, all small media, take out some of these bigger pieces, um, small media, so it'll go into the pot pretty good. And as you guys know, I like to do the pour and tap, pour and tap. So hopefully we'll be able to get that media in between all of those roofs and not leave a bunch of air pockets. So how are we going to position her in? Let's be very careful here. So with this one, let's see. So this is the newest growth right here with the bud on it. This one here in the front, um, growing this new leaf right here is her latest fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pot her kind of back a little bit um, because in theory she should be growing in this direction unless we have fans coming that way but I'm going to leave enough room just in case and I'll leave enough room for two um, at least a year's worth of growth ideally two years worth of growth um, if she doesn't produce anything back here. So, but that's, that's my theory and that's what we're gonna go with. So, let's do this. Let's move her over and we will start pouring in and shaking. And pat, and like I said, it's just put your media in and then I like to pat it and then um, it, also, I like to use my finger to kind of move it in between, especially those that need that really good packing in without all the aerial roots. Uh, not aerial roots, sorry, air pockets. Um, now, with the fowl, I'm not as picky just because they do uh, appreciate a little more air. And again, it's because they are at the fights, and so they don't mind some air around, a lot of air around their roots. Pathiopetalums, however, do not. So... Let's just move, turn her around just to make sure. So another thing you can do, guys, is you can pick your pot up and squeeze the pot to kind of make that air or that space fill in and then just kind of shake it. Um, that's another little trick. And that's another reason I like to go low as well is so when I'm doing all that stuff, um, if I need to pull up to help tighten that area, I can. So let's just... And this is similar to what she came out of. She came out of bark and larger perlite. And the bark they were using looked like it was medium-sized bark. So she's going back in pretty much what I um, took her out of. It's just smaller bark, and then I've added the charcoal, and it's smaller perlite. She, the, the perlite was um, the bigger pieces. So she's not going into a new media, so she should adjust pretty good. And of course, when I get done with um, potting her, I am gonna give her a good soak just to get all the media nice and moist um, around her root area so that she doesn't experience too much of um, a shock in what's going on with her. So let me just bang that a little bit. Looks like all my perlite is trying to stick in one spot here. Guys, look at this. It's all in one spot, that is crazy. I mean, there's some all the way around, but I've just got this one big clump of it. That's all right. And, all right, so I'm going to finish doing this, and then we will come back with our final thoughts. All right, guys, so here she is, all potted up and done. So, again, these are, they say, um, to use Roger's phrase, they have said that these are easy to care for. So far, I have found her fairly easy to take care of. Um, like I said, I've been watering her just as the media is getting dry. And then here she is in her new pot. There's a lot of perlite in there, and it just, I don't know why it all settles into one spot. Um, but as I water her, it will kind of rise and drop and go all over the place. So I'm not too worried about it. I did restake the bloom so like i said i'm not going to cut the bloom yet she's still really pretty um it is kind of starting to go over but hopefully with this new growth coming here wait a minute where is it with her new growth coming i'm going to have to keep an eye on her and just to make sure um that she stays healthy and i hope we get another bloom from her the thing with slipper orchids is they do grow uber slow like orchids in general grow slow but these guys like give a new definition to the word slow. 
Um, some of your multiflorals are what they call sequential bloomers, meaning that you can have a bloom after a bloom after a bloom after a bloom. I think you're um, similar to a psychosis. So you could actually have a blooming for a year, depending on how many blooms it makes. Or you can have one that is just an individual bloom, and obviously you want to cut it when it goes over. A healthy plant will bloom off of each new growth. I'm hoping that I have a healthy one here so that when I cut this one off um, in a few months, I will have another bloom. It can take anywhere from one to two years for a Pathiopetalum to bloom. Just kind of depends on the variety, the species, the hybrid, what went in the hybrid, your environment, your care, your culture. Just, there's so many different factors. There's no trick like with Phalaenopsis where if you um, give it a cool down at night, it'll induce spiking. No such tricks with this one. It's either blooming or it's not gonna bloom for you. Um, so if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And again, if you have the Maudier type and are successful with those and have some tips on those, I would very much appreciate it because I really would like to grow those just because the foliage in and of itself is pretty to look at. So when you don't have these beautiful blooms, you have something beautiful to look at. Not saying that these aren't pretty, but they're green. I mean, they're green. Um, they don't have any patterning. They don't, they're not interesting um, without the flower. So there she is. And I will give you guys a close up as we are going to leave. Isn't she gorgeous? Beautiful. All right, well, we'll see you on the next one.